Joe Lines here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Yeah, and we're on the uh, 58th Auto Hockey Webinar. Um, I feel like it's it's a never ending thing, but um, which it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. And uh, let's go ahead and get get started here. Thank you all for signing up. We had a we had 99. I was so disappointed. I was hoping like we were going to hit 100, but um, maybe next month we'll have 100 registrants. Obviously, we don't usually have that many people show up because it's a worldwide thing. And for a lot of people, this is the middle of the night. Uh, but if you do have questions, we try to have everyone start off muted just because it gets really to be mayhem if we're all trying to talk at the same time. Um, and then Jackie or I will be watching the chat a lot um, and we'll, you know, bring up your question. Or if you just say, you know, if you want to put in the chat, you have a question, we'll try to pause and let you ask your question if you'd rather just ask it. <clears throat> um, so first off, if, if, you know, hopefully you've been to the pod.the-automator.com where we're hosting our, our newest podcasts. Um, these are the last we, we've done this month, and I think all of these, again, Jackie, since we've switched over to having a list of items and kind of going through them, um, I think our podcasts have been kicking butt, um, and I meant to, let me copy all of this, I'll throw all this in the chat, in case you guys haven't heard any of those. Um, the, the moving off the plateau, actually these two, the tips we wish we'd known before um, learning to code. Um, and in the stuff to move you off the plateau to kind of help you condense your learning time on learning things. I thought both those were really good. Yeah, absolutely. And then this one, actually, this one, it wasn't a planned call uh, recording, really. But ja um, sorry, Isaiah and I were we were talking about URL download to file and web scraping and API calls. And it turned into this really fascinating um, discussion on HTTP protocol and web scraping and where we're trying to go with stuff. So I, I highly recommend if you didn't watch it, if you're into web scraping or API calls, it's a really good video where you learn a lot of background stuff on, on web scraping and things that it was, it was a fun conversation. Um, and then was it, was it two weeks ago now, somewhere in there roughly, we, we launched yeah. our intro to DOS cutting edge yeah. intro to DOS course, um, which we, we all know we're, we're all using Windows, right? <clears throat> um, DOS can save your butt. And it can be used for a lot of other things. Um, I think a couple of you guys have worked through the course. And, and I know just from working, because I, I didn't do the, uh, I, I helped outline, you know, what we want to put into it stuff. But Isaiah's led the whole, most of the DOS stuff. And then I did a little bit of auto hockey things at the end. But I learned a ton working through it. It was, it was really cool functionality stuff. And I've been using DOS for, you know, over 30 years, rough somewhere in there. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a really good course, I thought. And our script highlight, um, this one, I thought it was really interesting. I'm not too sure for how many of us on here, but it's all done in auto hotkey. This is, here's the actual script. I'm not gonna go through it. It's 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 big, it's a biggie. And, and not to critique the guy, but I wrote him and he actually replied back. He said he understood. He has a lot of functionality into it. Let me show you. I'm going to hit, I think it's Alt-C. There we go. Uh, yeah, weird. So this is this little cursor highlighter, right? Um, and you can change it. Like I can come in here and click and say, let's switch to focus. And so you can see how it's focused, right? So if we were recording a, a, a webinar per chance or a course or whatever, um, or just a Zoom call and you want to highlight things, right? It's kind of a cool functionality and you can switch it also to a, um, oh yeah, a, a, a picture. You can choose which picture you want and you can change the size and the color of everything. It's very intricate. And that was my critique was, this is really cool. But to me, it's got 8 million things where all I really care about is that like the yellow highlight and maybe the, the color and size of it. And, and that would greatly reduce the size of the script overall. But, um, oh God, let me turn that thing off because it's gonna drive me nuts. There we go, okay. So here are the two places where you can get that, um, but it is, it's a native auto hotkey thing. It's free. I thought it was a pre pretty cool thing that was done in auto hotkey um, that can be very helpful. Yeah. Do you yeah. have any questions about anything with that? I don't per se have any questions. I, I would like to know, it looked kind of like he was using a timer to follow the cursor. Does that sound about right? I didn't it? look at the code at all. It was just so big. I. I'm like, you know what, I'm, it's one of those, like, I didn't really feel like stuff. Now, I plan to examine what he's doing, and then we're going to create our own version, um, a much simpler version, you know, that, that does a lot less. 
Yeah. So we'll probably borrow was, from it. I was just thinking that maybe a, a mouse hook of some kind would have made it work a bit more smooth. But yeah. Yep. You you don't need to go look for it. If okay, yeah. So so let's get now. Today's webinar, um, we're gonna it's we're gonna cover Notepad plus plus and it's it's an, I should have brought up the slide. I should have had the data here, but um, from memory, from our auto hockey survey that we did earlier this year, uh, it had nearly one in three users used Notepad plus plus. And um, I, I know Jackie and I we've we've used Notepad plus plus. Don't you know? Both of us have used it. Um, it wasn't our go to for years. Site was our go to. Now they both rely on us until a. Um, not control. What's it called? Component. Um, it is a control. This component. Okay. Um, in um, but neither of us were, I think, really big Notepad plus plus users. But um, Isaiah also used to use it. So uh, we had someone else that was going to present on it. He couldn't make it, unfortunately. So Isaiah is going to lead us through this. But going through it, we actually created um, some really cool stuff that I think is actually going to even improve the usage of Notepad plus even more. Now. My one caveat I want to throw it out there is, again, I don't actually recommend Notepad++. I would say if you're totally new to AutoHotKey, start with Site for AutoHotKey. It's a great, solid, easy to install editor. Um, after that, I would move up to Studio. And then if you're working with more than one person or if you're distributing code and whatever, VS Code was, was a really amazing. That was our webinar last month. So uh, on that note, um, Isaiah, why don't you go ahead and start showing us what you've been doing. OK, hi. Um, well, before we really start, I do want to tell you, as uh, Joe just mentioned, there are, there are a few kind of like little points that you always have to keep in mind with Notepad++. Actually, Joe, do you remember when uh, when you saw when it was released? It was a 2003 or something like that, I think right? So. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, Notepad++, whenever, if you are going to use Notepad++, you have to keep in mind, this is a very old software. And... Uh, the difference between Notepad++ and other uh, editors is that they're not they're not bringing kind of like the cutting edge stuff to it. They just want to have something, and their idea is small. Um, it is a very small uh, file, but at the same time extremely powerful. So you just have this this compromise between simplicity and how many things it can do, and that makes sometimes it's not that good because there are some things that are not that easy. They're not that, uh, it's a little bit quirky. It's kind of like out of hotkey. It has its own like kind of like little things, right? So let me go ahead and show you more or less uh, what it looks like and you know the basics of it. So first of all, if you go to theautomator.com and you go to on the top page, the editor uh, page, uh, just for Notepad++, plus plus, and there you can, uh, download uh, the editor itself. You have a link to the editor and you have a file here that has all the hotkeys, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, not, not to the, well, yeah. So if yeah you click that's here, it's gonna tell you, yeah, it's gonna tell you, take you to the download section, right? But you have uh, a PDF files with all the hotkeys available, the default ones, right? We have some configuration files for our hotkey here. And we have a little script that we were testing today, right? And so for now, I'm just gonna download the configuration files. Let's go ahead and download that. And the help launcher, I already have it, so I don't have to download it. But anyways, let's just go ahead and get it from here. Now the download here, obviously we would get the newest release. One big thing that I would like you to keep in mind is that uh, I would uh, really recommend you downloading the 32-bit version instead of the 60-bit instead of the 64 bit. And it's, it sounds like, what, why would you do it? Well, the thing is that, uh, again, this was this software is from 2003, and there's a section that has to do with plugins that was developed for the 32 bit version. Most of the plugins that are there are not available to the 64 bit version without some modification. So for that reason, you lose a lot of, a lot of functionality that you might otherwise have had. And I will show you for at least one of them. Uh, you can download the installer, portable versions as you want, but let's go ahead and install it. Now, the XML files that I downloaded before, the configuration files, is kind of like an XML file that we're gonna get. We're gonna see. Let's go ahead and modify this a little bit. There we go. 
to finish. Now, as soon as we install it, right, the first thing that I would do is just open right there where you are, control O, so that you have the list of files that are on the notepad plus plus folder, because you will need to move some things there. So let's go ahead and try to open this, this folder um, directly on, on Explorer. Let's just do that. Right, so I have it there. Now I have, I have here the XML files that I was talking about. Those are two files that are here in the configuration files. And those are the ones that you need. The first one has to do with uh, the autocomplete and that you would move it to the autocompletion folder here on Notepad++. So on the installation folder of Notepad++ autocompletion, you just drag and drop that there. Um, yeah, continue. You're good to go. The other file, which is the user defined language, it doesn't matter where it is because you're going to manually import it later on. So, with that, let's just go ahead and close Notepad plus plus and reopen yeah. it. Just to make, yeah. Isaiah, sorry for interrupting you, but um, did we edit, we meaning you, edit both of those files, or is one of them mainly the one on the forum and the other one is? This is the one that we we monkeyed with. Uh, we we modified both of them. Okay, so just want to make it clear. Yeah, if, yeah. If you guys are watching this, you might want to get our versions because he added some little jazzy stuff to the, the. Right, exactly. So, but in any in any case, it, you can get it from. There is a version on the auto uh, on the auto hockey forums. It's okay. That's not a bad thing. But uh, the one that I that we provided here has some modifications on it now. Um, the first thing that you're going to do, and I'm just going ahead of myself there, here on the top, you, when you select the language option, there is a section that is called the user defined language. And that's what you're going to import right now. So what we're going to do is this, we're going to define our language, right? And we're going to select the option to import a file. As you see here, there is no language for our hotkey. And also here on the language selector, you do not see our hotkey anywhere because auto hotkey is not included by default. You're gonna import, and basically you're just gonna import the file that we just downloaded. Gonna say import successful. And now you will see that auto hotkey shows up in here. When you select it, you will be able to see your keywords and everything. Now, here on the language selector, you still don't see it. And some people, here's where they get lost. The problem is that even though you loaded the user language, you have to save it. And now that you hit here where it says save as, you select the uh, key name or whatever, hit OK. And now this file, you will be able to find it on your menu here for the language, right? So of course, as this is a user defined language, you can go ahead and modify it, add uh, different uh, keywords if you want. You can have modify how the comments work and so on. So basically you can completely um, use that in general. Now, right now, let's go ahead and open a script. Let's go ahead and grab any script. Let's go ahead and something like this, let's open it. And as you can see, automatically we get our uh, Notepad plus uh, plus now with our hotkey syntax highlight, but there's something that you might notice, and it is that sometimes you will find that the folding options for this is kind of broken. And that's the thing that I wanted to kind of like mention. If you are using a user defined language for our hotkey, right, the file itself should not contain the Unix. Uh, line ending because the user defined language engine that Notepad++ uses does not find the, it does not work well with the Linux file ending. So you would have to use the Windows file ending, which is carriage return, and now your folding should work perfectly fine. Okay, so in any case, if you find that little <laughs> issue, so that is the part where, yeah, we finished. Now, auto, uh, I'm sorry, Notepad++ is kind of like configured for you. Now, there are some other things that we might want to install before I just go ahead and go an overview of things that you can do here. 
um, mainly are the plugins. You have a section that is closed that is called plugins here. It by default comes with three little um, options, like for example, converting uh, hexadecimal to ASCII and some other things like base64 encode. So basically just, just from here, you, you don't even need a function, which is something that I meet in other editors. You just select text and click on base64 encode and that's it. So basically just by itself, it comes like that. You have your encoder and your decoder, right? So, but if you need more functionality, you can click here on the plugins admin. And that's where you would find all the plugins that you have to be able to install to Notepad++. So uh, one of them, there's a, a few of them that I would really suggest, like for example, the text effects. So if you can see down here, we selected the text effects characters. This is a killer. <laughs> this, this, if you don't have this, like uh, you don't have enough, you don't have all the functionality that you could get. That's one that adds a lot of functionality to work with text uh, on top of all the ones that are uh, already na native to Notepad. I would also have the autosave. There are some plugins for autosaving. And there are some others that we might want to add, like for example, I cannot live without a hex editor. I need to have a hex editor in there and this indent by fold if you want. And some of the things that Notepad++ has, but some plugins do it better. That's what's going on, right? Um, so after you select the ones that you want, you just click install and you're good to go. It's, going, it's just gonna go ahead and um, install the plugins for you. And basically, if you go here to the plugins menu, you will have the options for each of the plugins that you kind of like install, right? So that's basically the, the setup of Notepad++. I would say like, that's the most setup I have ever done. I, as soon as I have it like this, I start coding and that's it. I was, uh, I was working with it for a long time almost 10 years. Now, I do have to say, there's a few things that they're not working as intended and probably it's because it is dated software, right? There's a lot of things that you're gonna miss out. Like you say like, oh, how do I do this? It's very likely that you cannot do it very easily in Notepad++. But this little guy packs a lot of features. Now, if you just go ahead and click on the edit menu here, just on the here, on the left, you have a few interesting things, like for example, line operations, the normal duplicate line and so on. You can split lines, you can join lines, you can actually sort everything out. So there's a lot of little things that you can do, like remove all the empty lines on your file by one click, or you can actually set up hotkeys for those things. The command, auto completion, changing the, uh, the end of line, trailing spaces, ending spaces, all those kind of little things that right now they are default on all the other editors. By the time Notepad++ was starting, those were features that nobody had. So that's the reason why like a lot of people use Notepad++ because th those were like the amazing things that nobody had, right? Um, one of the interesting things that I uh, like a lot is the fact that I can access a lot of character sets and encoding that even editors like VS Code, you cannot access. Like for example, if you want to save a UTF-8 file with the bomb character on it, VS Code will not help you. VS Code cannot handle that. And this is funny because our hotkey by default the one that reads is UTF-8 with bomb. You would have to actually specify that you want UTF-8 raw if you want to work with files that are used by the file read and the file append command. So you have to be careful with those. Now, as I mentioned in other editors, you might not have access to that. Well, this editor from 2003 actually handles it just fine. Mm. The other things, of course, you have your configurations for the styles and stuff like that. But in the preferences, one of the things that I would like to mention 
is uh, there's a few things. Whenever you're, whenever you start with with Notepad plus plus, I would automatically select the options here to auto close characters like the the braces, brackets, and stuff. I don't know why they're not selected by default. They aren't. Now, one interesting thing is that you can define your own. So for example, in our hotkey, you can use the percent sign to, uh, to define variables, right? So you could also add that one to the list of auto close. And what happens is that when, whenever you type that character, it would automatically put a second one on it. The same thing I would say, by the way, we have the auto indent in there selected. And I would like to see, for example, yeah, I usually have the minimize the system tray and so on. I, we joke, we, we saw something that we were talking about before. Oh yeah, here, the multi-editing. That has to do with creating multiple- um, uh, Multi-line typing. Right, so here in Notepad++ for you to create multiple cursors, um, it's just by pressing the shift, alt, and down or up keys. And that would create kind of like multiple courses for you in which you will be able to type stuff in multiple locations at once. This is a, a hotkey that is not easily known because the only place where you would know about that is if you go to the edit menu and click on column mode, which will tell you this message box. So you wouldn't find that very easily. It's not <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a place where you would know that. But here it tells you that you could use the alt mouse selection or the alt shift arrow keys to have what they call column mode. In other editors, we call it like multi-cursor, right? Like having many cursors so you can type in many locations at once. Now, uh, from the interesting things that you could find in, um, in Notepad++, besides you know, having your function definition lists and maps and so on, which are many others, um, you could select uh, a text. And you know that whenever you double click on a text in Notepad++, it would highlight where it's located, right? But sometimes you want to select other things, but don't, not lose the highlight that you just had, right? So they have a, a, a way here that you right click on a word and style it by one of the tokens that you have available. You sign, you have a color now for that token and wherever it finds that, it will have that color. So it is gonna stay highlighted, even if you highlight something else. And, and Isaiah, I, I'm gonna guess that's not something that's saved though, right? If you close this file and reopen it, that's gonna go away? No, I think it is. it stays like that. Really? I mean, yeah, I think, see, I've never thought about that. That seems like something to me that it's temporal, right? It's all oh, right. Yeah, it is temporal. I've never thought about fine. it. Right. It's just right. Yeah. Difficult. Now, in any case, we do have a different token. So you can actually highlight many things at the same time. And basically it's just for you to, if you're kind of like looking for something specific in your whole code, that makes it easier for you to do it. Beside the other finding functions that you have, Again, you do have your finding files for plays and stuff, but you have this section here to mark. And this is interesting because you can find something on the file, mark all the lines, right? And you can actually perform actions on them like bookmark those lines. Um, and now you can jump to all the bookmark lines instead of having to find them manually, right? So there was a lot of little details that this thing had previous to everybody else, that now became the default for everybody. Now, of course, uh, you would have something to start recording macros and stuff like that. You can uh, perform actions in Notepad++ and record them to later on go ahead and uh, run it. There is a specific macro that comes as an example, which is trim trailing space and save. So it, removes all the trading space on your on your file and saves the file. So it is just kind of like an example of a macro that you can create. Of course, you can do whatever you want. And you can assign hotkeys to it, right? Now, this thing, you can also run files. You can select a program to run. 
you can also tell the script that to tell um, Notepad plus plus to run the current file by using uh, quotation marks, using this notation to denote a uh, variable, and then you use full current path. And that would give you the full path to the current file for you to run it. Now, that's not really that intuitive. There are a few issues, especially when you're running with our hotkey, because they include files here. You know that they depend on the current working directory, which is the file. But this run command will execute it with, with a different environment. So you will have issues with that. Um, that's the reason why I do not use the run command any longer. But one of the interesting things that I can do with this is to kind of like select the help file, the auto hotkey help file, for example, and have a hotkey to open it because you can select any type of uh, files, any type of executable files, or I think even the, you can select any type of files if you want. And then you save that as a has, and you can save a hotkey for it. For example, let's go ahead and control shift six. And now that, will stay on my list of things that I could run automatically. As you can see here, test would be uh, using that hotkey to run whatever I set it up to. And as you can see, they already have some uh, interesting, interesting selections here, like to open the PHP help or the Wikipedia search or some other things, right? So basically you can modify the run command to whatever you want. Now, I will tell you that is not as simple as it looks <laughs> to get it to work at once, right? It is uh, a little bit tricky because it is running on a different environment than what you might expect. It is going to start on the on the Notepad plus plus file, so, uh, on the Notepad plus plus folder. Um, so you would have to set up the environment and do other things that are a little bit trickier. But in 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 any case, again, this is. Uh, quick and simple editor that has, uh, doesn't take much space. And that's the beauty of it. It's very simple. You just enter, you can start coding right away. Let's let's walk through, I, I got a list of stuff, right? Let's walk through some of these. Um, so for running, which you already covered kind of that, but you could, there was another way to run the stuff, wasn't there? Oh, just. Oh, when just, you say run, run, no, it well, we should be with a, it would be oh well we tried with a with a plugin I think it was oh that's we what had it was. this yeah so it was like a run do, do me a favor though go, go back to the other the run and paste the 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 built-in Notepad variable you know that you had just so people can actually have the real text in case they want to um, oh, try right. it okay so right. you mean hold on so let me see hold on. all right so you mean the yeah the dollar sign. Right. Yeah. So that's full current path. That will be the variable that you need. And so if I do that, if I try to run it, you will see that I get an error on auto hotkey. So it tried to read the script, it tried to run it, but I have an include problem because it's trying to include a library that does not exist because it's trying to run the script from the program files notepad plus plus. But anyways, you can actually specify the current full path of, of whatever you have opened there. The only thing is that I will not get into how you can set up the environment to run from the current script and so on. Now, the problem is with the includes because the includes get read before the set working directory. So if you want to use the set working there, to kind of like change the work in there, it's not going to work out because they include get read before that, right? So um, there are some other things that you can do to do that, but it is a little fairly complicated to do that. Yeah, um, um, it, yeah. go ahead and uh, with the other things that you want yeah, to do. So there was check how to change a hotkey to a given thing because that was quite comical. Um, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so here in the settings, you can go to shortcut mapper and now you can go ahead and uh, <laughs> Uh, take a look at the old style hotkey list that you have here. 
Finally, they have a filter down at the bottom. When I used the program, they didn't have a filter, so you had to actually kind of like scroll about, which was a pain in the ass. So, but in any case, now you have this uh, filter thing that you can just go ahead and type a little bit, and now you could go ahead and select what kind of what key you want to use. And the system that they have is like the one that everybody had to use down before, because they didn't have a hotkey, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, a hotkey control. Well, so they had to figure it out. How did they figure it out? You know, like check boxes and a list. Right. So that was like the, the only way to do it back then. And they just haven't updated it. But yeah, you can change, modify, clear hotkeys from commands. Um, if you have them here, right? The crazy thing is like the Windows key probably didn't even exist when they when they created that. Um, <laughs> oh, anyway. man, the Windows key. The uh, yeah. changing your context menu. All right, yes. So they uh, allow you to go ahead and uh, this menu, whenever you right click, you have this menu here. If you don't like it, you can just change it. Uh, they added a new button that was not there before that says edit public context menu. And that is gonna just go ahead and open an XML file that is actually located right next to the uh, Notepad++ plus plus, uh, executable. So in your program files or the app roaming Notepad++ plus plus folder where the settings are, you can find uh, the context menu XML file which you can just go ahead and modify based on some rules that they have and they have links to the rules. So you know how you could do it, how you could modify it, but it is not that difficult. So basically you just go ahead and create your own menu, modify it, add new commands and stuff. It is completely doable and possible. Just, just have to know a little bit of XML for that. Now, I didn't ask you this one earlier today, but the um, can you change your theme? Yes. Sure. So you have your styler configuration. Now they have a theme here for different colors, right? So you select different weird stuff, right? Um, I'm not sure. I have never used. Oh, no, I like that, that wood one. That that's a that's good one, right? <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, usually I. You know what? I have. I never changed my my theme. <laughs> <laughs> I never even tried to do that, but in general, yes, you can. And even if you could go ahead and grab a specific language if you want, and you can change colors in that oh, specific neat. language, right? That's so in that, and yeah. not only not only the, the the styler like the whole thing, just oh well, I don't like the color of the right. of the comments in there. Now, this is for the languages that are already installed right. in, in 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 there, but you could do the same with the user defined language here, you just go here, select auto hotkey, and I don't know why it gets sold, but you select it, and then you can go ahead and select the colors here. So the first group, which ah, is okay. for the breaks and stuff, you hit the styler, cool. you select the color for it, whether it allows nesting or not. And if it allows nesting, which keyword can be nested inside of that one? That one is cool, for example, for nesting uh, line comments inside of block comments, if you want them to have different colors. Hmm. So for example, if you have uh, um, in this comment in here, so let me go here. So inside a block comment like this, you might want to highlight some lines in there and you might want to use a normal comment for that. But right hmm. now, everything looks the same, right? But you could tell, like, let's nest them. Oh. And when you nest them, you can have a different color for each. Right. And they would still be able to highlight independently. So um, you could create very complex highlighting with that. So, but the only thing is that you would need to have a little bit of time. But again, you could just go ahead and um, for each individual thing, you can select a color, a different cool. color, right? So yeah. And I know we looked at it, there There wasn't a way to change the default new file template for a given thing, right? No, we didn't, no, no, no. So basically you can uh, select some things for the new, uh, for new files. Like whenever you have a new document, whether it's gonna start with Windows uh, line ending, uh, what encoding is gonna have and so on, but you cannot really, you cannot really select uh, 
like a starting text, like mm -hmm. a template. Uh, not that I'm aware. Yeah. Right. Um, and then as far as the debug, there were a couple you said, but they're kind of clunky. Yes, they are. So basically those might, those, those are uh, at, uh, plugins that you might mm -hmm. use. So for the debug, you might want to go to uh, the BGP, which is the one that AutoHotKey uses, mm -hmm. which is the X debugger, right? So that's the one that AutoHotKey uses. You can install that one. But I noticed when I when I tried it a while ago, uh, the interface that it has, it's extremely, uh, yes, allow it. It basically here at the bottom, it's gonna uh, give you kind of like the raw information that AutoHotKey is sending. So mm -hmm. it is not as useful as well, not at least not to me. As yeah. and to set the brakes, um, you know, in VS Code, I just click on a line and that would set the brake, right? In here, you would have to kind of like click here. You you would have to select the line and click here oh, to the brake right? comes, right? So it is it is not as intuitive as you might think. Yeah. Um, removing the the brakes is a pain because you have to do it one by one. So if you have multiple breaks, you cannot just simply remove them off. Um, so there's, uh, again, the, the, the functionality is there. And it is the same debugger like that, that, that yeah. now the way how it is implemented is a little bit uh, confusing, it's a little bit clunky. I never used it really. Um, yeah. Now, now let's actually show them the one that really, really caught me by surprise because, and I looked also, I didn't actually tell you this, Isaiah. When, when you were doing some stuff, I was looking at the auto hotkey survey to see okay, yeah. are people who are using Notepad++, are they people have been using auto hotkey for 10 plus years, you know, or is it new people? Yeah, or yeah. What? It was all over the board. So it's new people and older people. Oh, Site wow. actually had, it was like the oldest people that have been using auto hotkey, the oldest on average, right? It was interesting. Whoa, but yeah. But here's the thing for me, when you're new to program auto hotkey, that F1 key is your best friend right yes. in that like when you told me that like it doesn't have that functionality oh, of course. that blew my mind um right so basically what happened is um notepad plus plus is designed for many other languages so it is kind of like a gen it's generalized right so it is for everybody so there is not one hot key that is specifically designed for something like the documentation for auto hockey. Of course, again, as I mentioned before, you could set up a run here to mm -hmm. that file, or as you can see here, get PHP help. I would assume that that would open the way, the php.net page, right? So that's what it's gonna do. So basically you can set it up mm -hmm. however you want, but it doesn't come by default. And that's where we started talking about creating a little script that goes ahead and allows you to have at least the, the auto hockey uh, um, documentation everywhere you are. So it doesn't have to be just on your current editor. So uh, do you want me to go ahead and launch that? Yeah, one? yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we have it here. Okay. So we have some tools here. And, oh, and by the way, here you, you saw the, the script scan, right? We, we, we finished that one as well, right? <laughs> so here, we have a script that what it does is just, it creates a hotkey. Let's go ahead and open it. And in the spirit of our hotkey, uh, Notepad++, let's go ahead and open it here. So we have a hotkey. We will later on make it so that you can set up your own hotkey. But for now, it's at 12. And that would grab whatever is on your cursor at the moment and just go ahead and send that to the auto hotkey uh, search engine. Let me go ahead and do that out here. My computer is acting weird right now. Maybe I had the script open up and ready. Oh. So the script. Seems to be that because yeah, we were working on this thing right before the yeah. webinar. So. Yeah, so I think the script was open before, so maybe that. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. 
Yeah, that's awesome. It's baby now. <laughs> Yeah, it was working perfectly earlier. Right. Yeah, that's how it, so let's let's go ahead and do the following. So um yeah, no, I want to open the script. Let's go ahead and open it up and debug it. Why not? Now that we're here. Did we make any changes? We do. That was the only thing. Yeah, so if I run the script and hit F12. Oh, you know what? That is interesting. There is no, where is my output control here? It's not getting there. So for some reason, go ahead and do this. Yeah. So yeah, the script is not reaching yeah, us. We'll, we'll figure purpose. it out. No, but, it, but yeah. It'll but, basically, you know, do an active search for what you have highlighted. Um, right, it, but it, it did, which was interesting two minutes ago. Yeah. But, but meanwhile, we'll while you're at that, let, let me ask people here, if, do they have any anything in particular they'd like to, to have demonstrated about, or worked yeah. on? I know John was asking just a clarification again, where do you export those two files to? Was it the um, no, so you don't have to export. Well, the only thing is that, you have to, is that the auto completion is that where you put them? Um, sorry. Oh yeah. So the auto complete folder on. Yep. So yep. if you go to the installation folder, so, so if you go to the program folder, Notepad plus plus, and there's the folder. Yeah, that's where I told them auto yep. completion, right? Yeah. So in any case, just. Go ahead and take a look at that. In the meantime, I just go ahead and if there have if they have any questions, just go ahead and ask. In the meantime, let me go ahead and verify. That. Is there anyone here besides? I saw Lonnie said he he uses it. Um, it sounds like he uses a Notepad plus plus the the sixty four bit version. Um, right. But it, is there any anything in particular that anyone you no know, also wants to highlight that they use that they like about it? <laughs> well, by the it, this is so old that I don't know if there's anything new about it, like that people might like. So well, it's, you know, we talked about earlier. It, it, the, the compared to Studio, right? You can open a hundred languages or whatever, right? That's that's a great functionality. It's very lightweight, right? It's a small program, um, and it can open really big files as well. So it, it's it's got those things going for it. Oh yeah, that's for sure. And but but I would say like for example, that, that's where if, if I'm gonna be coding on on Auto Hotkey, I would rather have either HK Studio or HK uh, the site for HK, right? Right. Because they, they are kind of like devoted to Auto Hotkey, while Notepad is more like a general right. uh, well, editor. And that's my thought editor. for people that are new to programming and especially in Auto Hotkey. That's where site is amazing because it's so easy to install and it's just ready to go out of the box. Yes, yes, that's for sure. I'm gonna tell hey, you something. You have some thoughts? Jackie? <laughs> no, not really. Okay. Um, it's been such a long time since I actually used it. So I, I wouldn't say I have any type of insight into what makes it better than the others. Right. Uh, so Ahmed said, Notepad++ has a small lag whenever I type because it seems to be indexing every word into an autocomplete. Any way to disable that? Yes, of course. You know, when um, I had turned that on with Site for Auto Hotkey, and uh, it, it, I didn't have a problem with it, but some people had reported problems with it. That is interesting. Uh, so, well, hold on, because I know what he's talking about. So, whatever you're typing that is not part of the language is right. also getting indexed. Yes. No. Right. So, so, for that one, I'm not really sure if you can. I know that I could turn off autocomplete in general. Mm -hmm. So, that's one of the things that I can do. So, if I go to the settings, preferences, and you go to auto completion, you can either, um, let me see something. I know that. The word oh, here, so, yeah, yeah. So only the function completion, maybe. Right. You put the function completion only, uh, might fix that issue for you, but I'm not really sure because uh, so that's the question whether that 
also accounts for commands. So let's go ahead and try it. Oh yeah, one thing that we have to take into consideration is that autocomplete in this thing is case sensitive. So if you just put the message box, let me do something because, oh, look at that. Now, now it's not doing that, hold on. Was it in the file? No, it's not in the file. That's what I'm saying. So let me, message, message box is not in the file. No, I don't have that anywhere. But this time it's actually all completed. You, you saw all. You saw oh, yeah. how much time we took on that, that one, right? Yeah, right. We, we took like almost half an hour yeah. because it was weird because we, we knew that it was case insensitive, right. and it was supposed to be doing what it was supposed to be. Doing. Maybe we, you know what? In in sight, some things you have to shut down sight and restart it for it to take effect. I thought about that and I actually closed that thing like three times and it was right. not even, so So it was kind of, and actually re, regarding the bug that we were having here right now with the script, it was such a such a small thing. That's yeah. the thing. So, so the while loop here, this while loop here in line 39, it was actually, instead of negative as it should be, it was positive. So we were falling into an infinite loop. That's so, so, so if it is positive like this, let me just break in here. So if it is positive like this and I hit F12, let's go ahead and do that, F12, it would, let me just go ahead and do this, right? So yeah, now, it, it, what it, so, so while the thing exists, it's going right. to enter into the loop and it was not going to get, so it was just because when I, caught, I, I was making some changes and I removed Gotcha. That little okay. guy, and that made the whole problem. And, and those are the type of things. If you do not have a system of breaks, like if you cannot break on your code, that would be very hard to catch. But now I can just simply click F12, and I know that it is just going to try to do the search. Now, the one thing that we were help working on was whether it is grabbing the whole line or not. Right. And it, it will open the, the file on whatever you have at that and, moment. And like, you could be a notepad, not notepad plus plus. So, right? you can no, be, you could be, be anywhere. Be messenger, right? You it can be matter. anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. you just select, you just put your cursor anywhere and it would try to grab that one word and it would try to go ahead and open the, the, the help file for that. Even if you are, for example, in other places, like let's say for example, yeah. But it has to be an editor, that's for sure. Because if it is text that you're gonna edit, then you're gonna you're gonna just let's go ahead and grab something that I can type right here. So if I'm there and I press F12, it is gonna grab it and go ahead and try. To I don't understand it. why you're saying that. Why? Because it's not actually. Yeah, because here you're not in a correct. So if if I click in there and now if I have it selected, yes, oh, it okay. would work. Right. So okay. if, if I have it selected. If I double click that word and hit control 12, it is gonna actually grab the word editor and look for it, even though there is nothing like that. But if if it, if there's no caret, it's not gonna work. I, I assume that it's, it would not work, right? So it should be empty, right? Exactly, it will be empty because there is no edit, uh, there is no caret. Now, anywhere else where I have a caret, I could just do that and it will work. It doesn't matter where you are at, you just press a hard key and it's going to open the, the, the help file. So, so Jean mentioned he uses it for comparing files. Um, Compare, um, you mean Notepad++? Plus Plus? Yes. Right. Um, I'm not sure if he's using a, um, a uh, plugin for that. Right. Very likely because I don't remember comparing files by default. John, there wanna... is, right. So, so let me go ahead and verify something real quick. No, no, I know that that might be a plugin and yeah, so there we go. We have to compare here mm. and oh, cool. it shows the difference side between side. two files side by side and you just go ahead and install that. I remember that it was not by default. So there are some things that might need you to install kind of like a thing that's compare, set first to compare, and now we have kind of like different uh, Thing. So this is the first one, this is the old, and now this is the the new. Of course, you have the hotkeys for it. 
Now it's just gonna go ahead and do. You see cool. what what you see on on VS Code now that that has been there for a long time. In other uh, kind of like old, old, older generation uh, um, editors. Now I do know that it was kind of like a plugin uh, available to it, not really a uh, something directly on Notepad plus plus, but yeah, you could do it. Won't you? Show them a little bit of that text FX because I think um, Jonathan also mentioned it. Uh, and just show them right. some of the cool stuff you were showing me the other day. It was it was pretty right. Amazing. Now I just noticed that a lot of things that you have here in text effects, like sorting lines, either case sensitive or insensitive, now they're part of the of mm -hmm. the of uh, built thing sort lines, right? So they kind of like imported many of those things because the, as I mentioned. At that time, when this thing came up, uh, came up, it was like really we uh, the matching braces, which is now normal and all editors. It was a function of this, um, but one of the things that I really loved was, and I was showing you about this, is fill down insert. Now fill down insert, I could just select uh, say for. Oh, right. I remember this one. Right. So, so you could grab any word or anything. You just grab something on your clipboard, whatever you have on your clipboard. It doesn't matter what it is. You select several lines and you select the option to send down, fill down, insert. And come on, let me, let me just go ahead and grab the selection. Like, I think it was like this. No, but sorry. The one that I'm looking for is not that one. It's the send through, how was it, like fill down through lines, insert clipboard through lines. And that would just add that to whatever you are at the moment. And this is, this was very good if I wanted to add a, a lot of globals. So if I had a lot of variables, and I just wanted to set them all to global, that would be great because I just, I just go ahead and select, copy the word global and just paste it through all the lines very easily. And that was, it always checks where the selection starts. Mm -hmm. So if you if you start the selection at the beginning of the word, it's gonna make it at the beginning of each line. But if you put the selection from here on, it would make it in the middle of each line, which is, it depends what you want to do. It's very, so now look, it splits everything with in the middle like that. So it depends, uh, the text effects in here you had which was kind of weird at that time, like decoding to either URL encoding and decoding. So if you are you're working with HTML and stuff like that, you could go ahead and encode the text directly to send it to an API call or whatever. Uh, you have conversions uh, to your decimals to binary, or so you could convert numbers and stuff like that. So there was like way too many things that you could do with text effects. And that's why I, I mentioned like that was one of the plugins that it was kind of like essential. If you downloaded Notepad++, you have to download that as well because no other editor had any of these kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. So it didn't have it and not even Notepad++. It was a plugin of it. But as you can see, they are already implementing those things into the, into the, well, into the main because it was very useful. Yeah, and that is the one difference I'd say be between site and Notepad++, well, at least site for auto hotkey, it's really stayed the same for quite a while now versus they're still updating Notepad++. Yeah, so basically we were seeing that like the, the latest release wasn't this year. So yeah. now the, the, the one thing is you should not expect like a very cool Level stuff there. on it, right? No, no, no. But they, they have kind of like a goal in mind and it is making it extremely simple to start with, but very powerful. You have a lot of options. Um, and that was the issue that we were discussing that it has so many options, but then you don't know where they are. So you would have to go scroll through all those menus to find the, the command that you're looking for. And that's where newer editors come into play with the new control shift P that gives you this uh, search for a command thing right. that you don't have to go through each of those right. uh, menus. Yeah. Well, in Notepad++, you would definitely would have to, right? You would have well, to go even, each way, or 
you could go to the to the uh, shortcut mapper and try here, like right. You know, you could try here to find whatever you are looking for. Now, now remember the one which I also should have said was show how to turn on and off the uh, the invisible like new lines and tabs and spaces. Yeah. So if you go to the view section here, you could go to show the symbols, right? And yep. now you have the option of white spaces, end of line, or all of them. Now you have to keep in mind that they named it show symbols, and some people might not know what that be. So you might not right away say like, oh yeah, this is where I would see those things. Well, yeah, that's where it is. And the word wrap is not on by default. So you would have to turn it on, toggle it on first. Yeah, um, Lonnie mentioned there's on the 64-bit version at least there's a plugin so you can edit remote files on the FTP server, um, which yes. I think I do uh, a site you, all you, the time. You, um, so that was on FTP servers, you mean? That's it's, the it, NF, N, N, no code plus plus FTP um, plugin. Yeah. Because yes, so if he's using a plugin in the 64-bit version, I can guarantee that it is in the 32-bit version. Very very. Uh, unlikely that it is not there. So if he has a, 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 a plugin, yes. Now, from there to the other way around. So if you have a um, a plugin on the 32-bit version, not uh, it not always. It's not always that you can see it on um, on the 64 version of it. Um, and then I think Jonathan mentioned someone else mentioned also the macro recorder was um, could be pretty useful on on some of the stuff they were doing. Right. I yes. think I think it, yeah, Lonnie. I think said he 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 does something on one line and then you know applies it to everything. Yes, and and you could go ahead and not only do that, but not only play it multiple times, but also set a part key to it. So if it is very useful to you, if it is something that you do very often. Like you could go ahead and uh, record a macro, set a hotkey to it, and then you could just go ahead and use it over and over. And he runs the portable version of both 64 and 32 bit. Um, so yeah, you could, you can use them that. So again, we were talking about that, that you can download the portable versions. That way you don't have to install anything. Right in your computer, and basically for for the longest time, uh, I had I had Notepad plus plus in a in a USB drive. I have a USB drive that has all my tools, so I have kind of like a folder in which I have a lot of little tools, like the six internal tool, tools that have the buffers. It has a lot of mm -hmm. interesting tools in there, and I have an editor that if I am in a computer that I need to actually work on, I just right. plug my USB drive and that's it. So um, now that the USB drives have enough space that you could just go ahead and throw the F code there. There's one uh, little thing that I miss, and it is that, uh, for example, all your settings are on a specific file, right? So if you don't, if you just go to another computer, download Notepad plus plus, you don't have your settings, right? So right. that's one of the things that modern editors kind of like come into place uh, that they are used in the cloud. Yeah, Google ways. Does that, right? With right. So there, yeah. So now it is true. Chrome was the one that made me so that everywhere I go, I have my same Chrome, and that made me get used to it. And now when I go ahead and use, for example, the S code, wherever I go, I have my hotkeys. So I don't have to worry about that. I have my 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 thing set up as I want. So in this case, if you are using a portable version, you have to keep in mind you have to use that version for, for all your settings and stuff. And because if you move to another computer, you will not have those, right? All right, well, we're right at the hour. Let me stop the recording here and we'll start up again. So recording.